Hi, and welcome back to our Ask the Agronomist video series. I am Phil Long, Precision Agronomy Advisor with Latham High Tech Seeds. This week, we're talking about fertilizers to keep out of the furrow. So, a couple things we want to know up front. Obviously, we're pushing yields more and more, so we're putting more things in the furrow and up front, spoon feeding the crop, which is great. Obviously, a soil test is the number one thing I could always recommend. You got to know what needs to be out there in the first place. But when it comes to keeping things out of the furrow, we typically talk about things like nitrogen, potassium and sulfur. Those are the ones that come to top of mind. One that's not so common would be boron. For sure, boron uh, can be, have a severe impact, especially in the furrow, uh, but just in general um, is one you gotta be very caref careful with if you need that nutrient out there. Saying all this, there's a lot of fertilizer forms or pure forms or uh, liquid forms, low salt variations that work really well in the furrow and sometimes even have things like boron in them just in very minute amounts. So it's not going to hurt it. So use uh, your <coughs> local agronomist and, and, and anybody else that's giving you direction on that. Uh, lean on them for, for specific guidance. But nitrogen, potassium, sulfur are the big ones. And, and how do they injure uh, our seed in the furrow? Well, number one, it's, it's a couple things. It's usually either salt injury, which most of us know. A lot of these fertilizers are salts. I always think of potassium chloride, so potash 060 is gonna be one of the most severe. It's a salt right next to the seed. As that salt is next to the seed, it's gonna draw moisture, draw water out of the seed, killing the seed, damaging the seed, killing germination, things like that. It can all be a, a, a situation you run into, especially if you have low moisture, since we've been in a drought for the last couple of years in a lot of Latham country, low on, mo low on moisture. So low moisture in the spring, uh, it's gonna pull more of that moisture out of the seed rather than pulling it from the soil. So soil type comes into play as well. The second part of this is ammonia burn, which you've probably seen, the anhydrous ammonia. Obviously that's free ammonia. Ammonia, talking about this, we've talked about it before, but NH3, which is a gas, uh, that can potentially burn your seed or roots coming out, even in the two by two situation. If you have a lot of certain fertilizers, even things like DAP, diammonium phosphate, um, uh, urea, things like that, things that'll be uh, quickly converted to a NH3 form. So a lot of times you see in fertilizers compared to a 1034O. And 1034O is a fairly safe combination. We usually say about five gallons per acre in a lighter soils. Uh, in the furrow is safe. Why is that one safe and UAN is not? Well, 1034O is, is actually in an NH4 form, so ammonium. Um, that is actually taken up by the plant. Nitrate, NO3 minus, and NH4 plus can both be taken up by the plant. So we don't have to worry about that one, but the other ones, like I said, uh, DAP, um, UAN, uh, and, and urea, even even things like uh, ammonium sulfate and so forth uh, can all potentially end up in a, in a NH3 ammonia form that could burn roots, uh, seed, and so forth. So keeping those away in a two by two or, or potentially even further on top of the ground or in a band further away or on top is, is fine, but you just gotta remember even in two by two at a higher rate, those things can potentially have harm, just like you see anhydrous a lot of times uh, in the spring and so forth can can burn if it's too close to the surface and the seed and the root so forth so keep those things in mind the other thing that can play a big role in this especially on the ammonia side is your soil type so pay attention you should always keep in, in, in mind your specific region and and fields but you know the higher CEC that's going to minimize this the more moisture we have that's going to minimize this effect uh, even your pH uh, especially on the ammonia side, the, the higher your pH, so above a 6, 8, or a 7 or so, is going to convert to uh, ammonia, so NH3, potentially causing more damage. So if you have higher pH soils, you're at a little more risk for that, so keep those rates lower uh, on those ammonia forms, uh, nitrogen forms that could be potentially damaged by ammonia burn. So, as always, if you have any questions about this, please feel free to reach out to us at 1-877-GO-LATHAM or visit us on our website at lathamseeds.com. Thanks for watching this week's Ask the Agronomist.